Okay, the 1970s in Canada was a pretty strange time. This was a carryover from the post-war years in the 1960s, where there was a lot of social unrest and labor issues, and people were kind of unhappy and trying to imagine what a new Canada might look like. Pierre Trudeau is the Prime Minister, he's a pretty groovy guy, everybody likes him, well, most everybody who's sort of east of Ontario's border with Manitoba likes him, and, um, in 1970s in Quebec especially, there's a lot of labor unrest. Um, the social problems, uh, language issues, there's a lot of inflation, there weren't enough jobs, people worried about the economy, there were a lot of union protests. And during this time, uh, a organization that identified itself as Marxist-Leninist called the FLQ, or the Front de Libération de Quebec, um, was starting to stage uh, violent protests. I mean, this was going on in the 1960s as well, but they were um, campaigning for fighting against what they called Anglo-Saxon imperialism, which was basically this idea that federal Canada run out of Ottawa, the English-speaking nation, was sort of calling all the shots and Quebec really didn't have much of a say in anything. Now, to some degree, this is actually quite true, and there's obviously still controversy in Canada over Quebec and the rest of the country and federalism and all that crap. And I'm not going to get into that because I wouldn't touch that issue with a 10-yard stick. All I'll say is that the FLQ was a, a violent organization. It was recognized as a terrorist organization. Um, over 160 violent incidents were perpetrated by them. Eight people were killed, hundreds injured. Um, you know, this was not a, a safe organization. So October of 1970, Robert Barassa's new Liberal government is in power in Quebec, just newly elected, and they're, you know, looking to try to address some of these problems. Well, shortly after they take power, James Richard Cross, a British diplomat, and Pierre Laporte, who is a Quebec cabinet minister, were both kidnapped by the FLQ. This is also a time of mailbox bombings that are going off all around Quebec. Um, most of these are centered in rural areas, of course, in like Montreal. So this creates a big problem, because what is Barassa going to do? You've had two uh, elected officials, or at least one, one elected official, kidnapped. Uh, Laporte was later found murdered. Barassa's whole policy was he wanted to try to negotiate and uh, figure out what the FLQ wanted. I'm going to post the link to the FLQ's manifesto. Hopefully I can find an English version as well. Basically, Pierre Trudeau says, you know what? Not good enough. We've got to do something. The following day, he declares a state of emergency and acts the War Measures Act, the only time this has ever been used in peacetime. Now, the War Measures Act basically suspended all civil, civil liberties and gave the military sort of carte blanche to arrest whoever they wanted to. So over, what was it, over 400 people were, 500 suspects were gathered up. Um, no charges were laid in, in this but over 8,000 armed soldiers were sent into Quebec to um, protect um, national monuments, public buildings, and these pub important officials and things like that. Now, obviously this didn't sit well with everybody because suspending all civil, civil liberties and putting the military in charge makes people pretty uneasy. Now, it's important to remember these are the circumstances that Pierre Trudeau's government was dealing with. There was a violent terrorist threat in Quebec at the time. However, it wasn't so much, I mean, it was historical and, and huge that Pierre Trudeau was the first and only Prime Minister to enact the War Measures Act during peacetime. He also was creating sort of, it was the way that he dealt with people and the way that he dealt with the media. He was very charismatic, but Pierre Trudeau was also very confident and some would say arrogant about the decisions that he made. So when he started being questioned about this by people like Tommy Douglas, his response was usually one of arrogance. And this is where the famous quote from him, when asked, you know, how far will he go, him responding, just watch me, really didn't sit very well with Canadians. Now, the War Measures Act didn't stay in place for very long, but it's important in Canada's history, A, because it's the only time it's ever happened in peacetime, the War Measures Act being enacted, but B, because it really stands as a symbol of... Um, distrust and Ottawa's intervention into Quebec affairs all throughout um, the 20th century, but certainly in the, the later part, in the post-war years, and into the, the 1990s with a referendum to see if Quebec would separate from Canada. Where was I going with that? 
it's, uh, it's a very important moment in Quebec and Canada relations and sort of set the stage for what would later turn into the big debate around whether or not Quebec wanted to stay in Canada. I'm going to post a bunch of links to um, some news coverage from when the October crisis was actually happening. It's a really fascinating time and it's really fascinating to see how Pierre Trudeau actually dealt with the media and, and talked about things, including the official broadcast and his speech to Canada about putting the War Measures Act in place. Really interesting stuff. Check it out. Bye! Ah, oh, I should have made this video in October. I can't wait.